welcome. Before we start the video, be aware that this video is almost an hour long and it basically, uh, I'm taking you through the uh, cleaning process and LCD replacement of my newly acquired Seiko pulse meter watch. And this is the final result. You will see in the video what is the process for restoring, at least the process that I do. I don't claim that this is the correct process or the standard process for cleaning a watch and uh, its band. Uh, it's something that I've learned from reading over the years and it has worked for me. Enjoy and feel free to skip it. I know, one hour is a lot of time. So I'm going to show you some of the tools and materials that we will use for this. If we are if we end up using anything else, I will describe it. So let's start on the left. This is a pump for blowing air in case we need to blow hair out of a place that we just cleaned. Uh, this watch apparently has a bad screen. You can see that the this, I think it was left in the sun too much. I haven't tried it yet. I do have the battery for it so I will know if we are going to use this screen or not. You need a tweezer, you need a pair of tweezers, you will need screwdrivers. This is a Phillips head screwdriver uh, because this watch has Phillips screws on the back. A regular flathead screwdriver in case we need in case the battery has a latch. And we are going to take off the strap for cleaning. Since I'm going to replace the screen, I'm also going to do a bit of cleaning on the watch. And I recommend you use one of these instead of a knife blade, because these, this, as you can see, it has a V-shaped end, and that will ensure you grab the spring bar from uh, from uh, two sides rather than doing a, a cut on the top. Uh, doing a grab on the top with a knife blade uh, you will end up you maybe will end up damaging the spring bar but that's no problem because those are replaceable you might end up damaging uh, the hole in which the spring bar goes and there goes your watch we have a microscope you can use a magnifier depends on what you have and we also have a multimeter just in case doesn't need to, it just needs to measure volts and uh, continuity. Here we have a bit of grease. I like to use this as a Parker Olu mineral grease for gaskets. You can use any type of recommended watch grease. You can also use silicone. I use these on the gaskets from the buttons and on the gasket from the back and because it prolongs, that's what the material data sheet says, it prolongs the, it prolongs life of rubber, I'm also going to use it on the bracelet, but I'll show you how. The first job that we have to do is to take off the band, the bracelet, and uh, clean it up. When you remove spring bars, it's advisable to check if they still retain their springiness because if, you, if they are a bit rusted inside, that rust will spread and the next time you want to take them off, they might be rusted to the point where the spring action doesn't work anymore and you will have serious troubles taking them off. So this one is okay. To make sure we get it cleaned properly, I'm also going to take this spring bar out and I'm going to use a pusher to do this. This is it, you can find these in uh, watchmaker sets on eBay and all you have to do is put it in there and just press in. Now we have to clean the bracelet. 
the band and uh, it's good to do an inspection and see if there are cracks uh, and you can do that with your eye and if you just take the bracelet and you do small bends if you see uh, small let's say crevasses then it's a high chance that the bracelet is starting to break down and as you can see I rubbed my nail there and it's just surface grind and the bracelet seems still pretty strong taking in account the fact that this watch was sold in 93 according to the warranty so let's wash these we are going to use a toothbrush and a mild soap and get them clean and get this uh, white residue off of it so here we are about the sink and uh, I have a regular toothbrush and some regular soap the purpose of this is to get all the grime out and take out any skin residue and I recommend that you first wash your hands really really well so you don't have any fat on them so I have already done that and I will move on to brushing it you have to brush it really really thorough Now you just use, use the directions of the vines that the bracelet has to make sure you get everything out. So here we are back from washing and you can already see that we are getting closer to the end result and uh, that whitish grime has washed off. Um, you have to be really, really thorough with uh, the toothbrush. So next step is to protect these. And uh, I'm going to use Parker Olive Mineral Grease. This is for uh, gaskets, it's marine grade. You can use any uh, rubber protector. I know some people recommend silicone and silicone seals the rubber to protect it from uh, residues getting into it um, I feel that silicone well the one that I have is a little bit too sticky and it's too thick so I am going to lubricate the band with this and I'm going to leave it a day to let it soak in and afterwards I am going to clean it off never clean a plastic band with alcohol. Remember that cleaning it with alcohol and exposing it to ultraviolet light, the sun, uh, will end up breaking it. And also never use alcohol on a plastic watch case. Never. So the first step is to make sure that there is no fat on my hands and I washed really well and I'm going to use uh, some paper towels uh, rubbed in alcohol and rub it all over my hands to make sure that I don't add any uh, grime for, from my fingers as I uh, well massage the lubricant into the rubber and it's like applying sun lotion you just get it on your finger spread it evenly it's a messy job no doubt about that Just get this out of the way. In the end, you would, and in the end, you will have to clean whatever you add in those holes, and you can do that with a toothpick and some, and with some cotton buds. Make sure you get it everywhere. So we are finished with lubricating the band, and uh, we'll leave that overnight to soak in and then we'll have to clean it off yes the cleaning process is very tedious but it's the effort you want to do if you have if you want to preserve your bands next step is opening the watch make 
make sure your screwdriver doesn't slip. This is a very good screwdriver. Um, it has a very fine head and it doesn't scratch. If you end up slipping, it's highly unlikely it will scratch it, but I don't want to test that out. Careful not to ruin the gasket. And with gasket, there is a trick I like to use to test them. If you see the gasket stiff and you're not able to wiggle it around, that means that that gasket is solidified and it needs changing. Um, if you have an original gasket, which you can change, uh, that's advisable. However, you can just test it just a bit with your with your uh, nail tip and see if it's soft don't oh just a little bit of pressure you don't want to damage it so I can tell that it even has a bit of elasticity to it and I'm also going to grease this up the trick with greasing up is not to pull it in between your fingers because you will end up stretching it and it won't fit back into place but rather just gently move your fingers along until you gently slide it along the entire edge of the gasket to make sure that there is no over left grease dry your fingers and then do that process again okay now we have a perfectly greased gasket we'll just leave this one to dry next to the band and now remember to clean your fingers before you touch the watch. And we are going to test and see if this watch works. I can see it has one, two, three, four regular head screws. One important thing, if you see that the watch has its alarm spring, and I do see that this one does, let's go in for a closer look. You can see the spring there, make sure you remove it and maybe just try to remove it. If it still holds in there, leave it in. It means that there is a small loop at the end which latches beneath this plastic case. So we'll proceed to removing the battery. Get the new battery ready and I will see for the first time if it works or not. Drop that in. On the assembly part, after I clean all the parts, I will use uh, finger gloves to make sure any grime or any fingerprints won't get in the watch. Hopefully that is sufficient. And yes, all it needed was a reset. Uh, you have this hole here and touch it with the tweezers on the back side of the module uh, of the battery holder. And you can see that this will need changing eventually because not all the segments are working and you can easily see uh, artifacts in the screen. You can actually see the other segments. So we've taken the retainer off of the battery and we're putting the battery aside. Uh, do have handy one of these uh, trays. You can use an ice cube tray or any kind of tray just to not lose the parts. And we'll continue with further disassembling 
the module. And I highly recommend that you use the manual. Take this aside. First just try to pull it out and if you'll see any resistance it means it has a small curl on the other side that holds it in. Do not pull it violently outside because it will end up stretching it beyond what it's supposed to be stretched. So now we're going to remove these screws from the case. Okay, make sure we put everything aside. Now the LCD should come up fairly easily and we are going to gently lift it up from the sides with a screwdriver. It's better if you have a plastic screwdriver, but this, again, this is going to be changed so I don't need to be extra gentle on it. But make sure that you're not jamming anything. Uh, the micro light might be on the side uh, and you might uh, break the glass of the bulb. And there we see the LCD screen. This is a screen, screening protector. And let's see if this is glued or not to the back. Nope. So in some watches you will see that this reflective panel is actually glued to the back. Like in the G-Shock Stargate series, it's glued to the back. Never take that, uh, never peel that off because trust me, uh, you will need a totally new one to glue on the back. And I've never seen a part like that, so I'm assuming that they're glued in the factory. And if you start peeling it off, you will make ridges on it. And uh, when you put it back on, those ridges will be highly visible. Okay, so make sure we don't scratch these in any way. Put them aside. So now we are at the module. Now, I have two options. I can either get the new LCD and put it in right now, or I can choose to strip it all apart and do a quick clean. So I will do that quick clean because according to the warranty, this watch is from 1993, I bet it can use a quick clean. You can actually see how complex this module is. I highly recommend you use the manual. I have it open in front of me. That's why I know what steps to take. And this, uh, the zebra strips you see here, they seem to be glued into place, but they're not glued into place. They're sitting there. Now, it's a good idea to memorize uh, how the strip, which zebra strip was on the top, which zebra strip was on the bottom, uh, and their exact position, because uh, since they were on there, the traces, the, the small vertical traces that lead up to the module, these have small ridges that actually dug into this uh, zebra strip. It's just a very small digging, to call it so. Uh, and if you end up offsetting it, uh, you might not have, you will end up with the zebra, zebra strip uh, staying on top of those digs and you might not get good contact with the LCD. So have a way in which you know which was on top, which was on the bottom. It does make a difference if the zebra strip is, you can see now, let's say that they're, they're put in like this. If when you put it back in, if you invert it and you will have those small ridges on the top, you, again, you might not have good contact with the LCD screen. So memorize their position. This is not something that happens on all the watches, but it's 
uh, I've seen it, uh, I've seen LCDs not work because of this. Just gently remove it. It's not glued into place, you can just easily peel it off. Again, the other one. And there you have the module. Strip down. A good thing to do is when you are working with watch modules, uh, these are sensitive parts, especially underneath here, there is an, uh, a semiconductor chip, <laughs> let's call it an LSI. You might end up doing a short on the circuit if you are statically charged, so make sure that you are permanently connected to ground uh, your body in a way. Either you have an ESD bracelet, look it up online what, what it means, or you have your foot pressed against something that is made of metal. Just make sure that you don't have any static charge built up in your body before you handle this. And now you can see what I was talking about, the small curl on the back which was holding it in. You can actually see that this was has had that small curl which didn't allow us to remove it but if you twist it to the side and line up that curl with uh, the small ridge you have there you can take it out from the other side and I'll just make a, demonst a demonstration of how easy it is to get it to fall out and there you go it fell out make sure you don't lose the springs because they are hard to come by and here we have a, a protective film and you, you, you can see that there is a bit of humidity built up you can see it there if I gently pull it up you can see that there that doesn't have to be there so we'll just remove this and here we have all the parts of the watch stripped out. Next step is cleaning the case and uh, I am going to remove uh, the buttons as well because I want to make sure that the gasket or o-rings around the buttons are clean and lubricated before I put it back in. Now you can see that this is in a fairly clean condition but since I got to this point I might just as well clean it up. Uh, I am going to use uh, same soap, never use alcohol. I've seen online people giving advice to clean your G-Shock for example with alcohol. Well, I made the mistake a few years ago when I started looking into watches to, to clean an old school G-Shock. Uh, it was a G002 or G003 or something like that with alcohol. and. Afterwards, in a couple of minutes, I could see that you could actually, it, it, the, the, the protective shell was almost like bread. You can just take parts from it and that uh, I was pissed about that. And I learned my lesson the hard way. This is a harder plastic. Uh, it might take the alcohol easier, but it damages it anyway. So do not do that. Use a mild soap. Uh, or special cleaner to clean this and rinse it up very very well. Taking off the button, the buttons from a, a digital watch and this is 99% of the cases it has this special washers around them and th th they are like this and they're gripping uh, around a channel that is dug around the button. You will see that if you imagine that this is the button you can see that it will have uh, a channel dug around its perimeter in which that retainer washer sits and it will have another one in which the gasket sits so to take out the button you will have to first push out those uh, washer retainers and they are like this uh, they are interrupted at one point and you can actually use a screwdriver to uh, push it backwards uh, I recommend this doing with care and maybe under a microscope that's how I do it and I keep the top of the watch covered with a cloth uh, to make sure that if that 
washer retainer pings out, it springs out, you don't lose it because they are very hard to come by. You can only get them from a donor watch. They are easily interchangeable between watches, but uh, usually Casio ones are larger, uh, Seiko and Citizen ones are smaller and more precise. So now I want to practically demonstrate to you how are you how you're supposed to take out uh, these uh, retainers. You just have to turn it, gently turn it up so that space faces upwards and I will bring it up so you can see what I mean. You can see it on this button that it's actually facing upwards and I will just quickly show it to you. Sorry, this one is facing upwards and we need to use two screwdrivers, one from this side, uh, one from this side and simultaneously push it down. But again, under a microscope, having a cloth over it, just a small peak hole in which you can see what you are doing. So this is the setup that I have and I will be looking through the microscope, having this covered with a cloth. Now you can see it better. And I am going to push down on either side. This cloth will ensure that it doesn't have much room for the washer retainers to, to ping out. Now you can easily see those retainers. They are three. The other button had a much more different construction that I haven't seen thus far. You can see it's split between the middle and it just pushes inside. So now the buttons are easily pushed out and all I have to do is take out the retainers from the buttons on the front. So I removed the other buttons as well and they you i'm actually amazed and not surprised uh, about the build quality that we see uh, this is the button and you can see how uh, seiko decided to implement this spring and this button is all metal and it is the touch sensor so i've taken that side retainer out and you can see it has a spring on it and uh, apparently even a gasket. So again, very, very good build quality. And now we are left with a case and there isn't anything I can dismantle further. So I believe this is the time to wash it. You can see it, had, it has some grime collected around here, but I will take this and clean it up. What, I don't use a toothbrush on this because uh, I, it will no doubt end up damaging it. Uh, what I do use is this very soft brush. Um, it's really, 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 really soft. Very soft. And what I will do is uh, soap up this brush and just very finely go along the edges and recesses. But again, this is ultra fine. You can also use, if you don't have a brush like this, you can use makeup brushes. Uh, they have an, an array of uh, hardness in their hairs. And I recommend choosing uh, uh, somewhere in the middle, uh, stiff enough so you can get into the creases, but not that stiff so you can uh, scratch the glass. Although, this, I believe this is, isn't plastic. I, I believe this is glass and something like this will not scratch it. So it's on to the cleaning phase. I'm not going to show that on video. Uh, basically it's the same thing that I did on the bracelet, only I'm using this brush and being very careful how I do it. So this is the end result and notice that I'm using finger gloves and uh, this is how I will touch all the parts after they are clean. Uh, it's still drying out and you might notice that under the LCD there is uh, some water that got in. That's nothing to worry about. You can actively get that out with a hair dryer. 
uh, and just blow at an angle but don't put it too close just keep it uh, about the same distance or half the distance you would keep it from your hair uh, if there is any glue on uh, anywhere on the case uh, that might melt it down if it heats too much but what I'm going to do is let it dry out by itself overnight and that is the cleaning of the case Next we have an array of parts to clean, uh, I'm not going to show all of these on video but basically uh, on the model I will use uh, isopropanol or gas lighter fluid uh, or uh, just use alcohol that is as pure as possible because even the 99% pure uh, still has water in it so make sure that uh, what I will use to clean this uh, our uh, cotton earbuds and what I usually do is uh, dampen one of these one of the ends of the cotton buds uh, in the isopropanol uh, clean gently clean the part and then use the dry one to dry off any water that has remained there because as I said any water any alcohol uh, product contains a bit of water uh, and the alcohol dries out really quick and you are left with the water and you don't want that on a watch that is supposed to be water resistant to have water trapped inside so for the metal parts I will use isopropanol as I said uh, for this one as well for the zebra strips as well because they conduct electricity uh, whatever is plastic I'm going to use the soap and water uh, rinse it off really really well afterwards and let it dry overnight I'm not going to show the rest of the cleanup uh, on video because it does take a while uh, we'll return back at the assembly process when everything is clean I clean everything by hand I do have an ultrasonic machine uh, not sure how well it does uh, with a case uh, with a plastic case or a, a, a plastic assembly like this uh, I don't have the right fluids for it and I am much more comfortable to do a thorough cleaning uh, with that fine brush one thing worth mentioning is that uh, you have to change if they are worn out are the gaskets around the buttons um, a way you can easily see if they are still good or not uh, is the same as I did for the back cover gasket if uh, it has solidified and under a microscope what I used to do is gently push against it with my fingernail this one is too small to do any damage and I can see uh, if it's still soft and rubbery then that is a good gasket what I will do a good o-ring what I will do is uh, gently take it down uh, and uh, re-grease it and then put it back on if you have to change the gasket uh, the o-rings around the buttons uh, ideally you buy you have to get originals but on a watch this old it's highly unlikely that you will find the originals but what you can find on eBay is these uh, watch crown o-rings and uh, you can find them if you search by watch crown o-ring or if you just type in watch o-ring so we are back with the band and now we left it soaking for a day and now you need a clean cloth and we're just going to rub away all the excess grease from the exterior until we leave it in a nice clean state you'll need a clean cloth and you will also need plenty of uh, cotton buds to clean out the holes when you clean out the holes make sure you just pinch the head and you just twist it and there you can clean it off and then you wipe that excess with a And there you go a clean hole what you can also use in the end are toothpicks and you can just 
take it through the hole and clean out the excess. But that's the basic way to do it. Uh, be thorough when you clean it. Here we are with the end result and as you can see it looks almost brand new. We don't have that white discoloration or residue whatever it was and it looks absolutely clean. It isn't sticky anymore as I rubbed it off really well. Since we are using the gaskets that the watch already had with it because they aren't uh, solidified and they are still very soft. Uh, all we want to do is first clean them up, degrease them. Uh, we can use water and a bit of dish detergent as that is a very good degreaser. And afterwards we will grease them back with our grease. So I'm going to use a cup and a toothbrush uh, to mix it. Act like a dishwasher. And we are going to put all the gaskets inside. So that's six, all of them. And we just do a washing motion. And you should do this really thoroughly because uh, we want to get them as clean as possible. Do this for around two minutes and you should be done. Afterwards, we will rinse them, dry them, and re-grease them. So those are the gaskets. They are now clean and rinsed, and now we'll dry them off. We'll set that aside and do the same operation for the buttons. Okay, and we are going to take one of these and do a thorough clean. You just hold it in between your fingers and you just rub it against it. Make sure you get every side of it. And the idea is not to touch it with your fingers. And there we go, that is one very clean button. And we do the rest for the rest of the buttons. So these are all the buttons clean. And to be fair, they weren't actually dirty to begin with. But now we know that they have zero grease on them. And they are ready to receive the gaskets. Make sure we don't lose that spring for this button here. Uh, so now we have all the parts cleaned up and uh, we have to be careful from now on. Uh, the entire assembly uh, will be done wearing finger gloves and tweezers. I have prepared here tweezers with uh, uh, protected tips which will ensure I don't scratch anything. I have here the replacement screen. Next step is greasing the gaskets or the O-rings uh, and this you can do with your fingers and beforehand uh, you have to make sure there is no fat on your fingers because our aim is to get the grease on the O-rings and not the fat on your fingers. So I wiped my fingers with a cloth that was uh, dampened in isopropanol and now we are going to get a little bit on the end of the finger. That should be sufficient. And then we are going to spread it evenly across the fingers. And what you do is you take the gasket and you start rubbing it in between your fingers. And there we go, that was one gasket done. And it's the same for the other gaskets. So here we have the buttons already. 
and I've taken on a fresh pair of finger gloves and now we're going to start with assembly. First we're going to clean up the work desk. Now we are at the point where we are going to position the buttons inside the watch and we are going to attach the retainer washers. I'm going to take the washer retainer and I'm going to place it on the ridge of the button and then with the larger screwdriver I am going to press uh, on top of it until it clicks into place. So as it will sit there I will press against it with this screwdriver being very careful not to damage anything around and it will snap into place. And I am going to do this operation under the microscope. And that is how the operation is done. We'll do that for the for all the other buttons. And I think there is one part and you can see why it's very important to have the manual handy is that this will need to sit oops sorry about that just about there which means that I have to take out the retainer washer that I placed earlier, place this piece of metal first and afterwards slide that into place because right now uh, it's the wrong way. So now we have all the buttons latched in with their retaining washers and we are going to proceed to assembling the module. All the parts from the module have been cleaned up. We have to be careful with which part we're going to sit these in because as I said, as I said there are some ridges here that have been created while the watch was closed as this part was sitting on the uh, small uh, contact pads. When we have to clean something right now, because everything is clean, we're going to clean it with this. Put in the shield, and now we are going to add the replacement screen. I previously opened this to make sure I got the correct part. And there it is. We're going to do a quick inspection to make sure it is clean. Let's see a speck of dirt. And the watch, this part is facing downwards, which means that this is the correct way to set the screen. And after reset, there we have a proper working module. Working micro light. and everything else. Time to put the module back in the watch. We are going to push out the buttons and we are going to do a quick spray 
and we are going to inspect the glass to make sure there are no grimes. Yep. Check the watch, make sure there is no grime trapped underneath the LCD. And we're going to put it back together, have the gasket in and have the final product.